I love to laugh. Toast, I've been meaning to talk to you. You're talking to me now? Yes. It's about the sense of humour issue. I have a terrific sense of humour. It's just very dry. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things in British culture impossible to explain to non-Brits. It's not quite nasal enough the way you're doing it, all right? You're not doing it the way he speaks. You're not doing it with the kind of... And you don't do the broken voice, but it gets very emotional. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at a few causes of cultural confusion that are unique to the small island we call home. What do you find weird about the UK? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Marmite A dark brown savoury spread invented in the late 19th century and made from yeast extract sludge left over from brewing beer. Sounds yummy. Well, actually, it doesn't. But Marmite fans know the very real joy it can bring when spread thinly on hot buttered toast, with a fresh brewed cup of tea to balance out the salty flavour. It doesn't take long before new recruit Callum Howe finds another jar in a shocking state. Oh no. What's um, Baby one. Okay, don't panic. It's not been used in months. Not all Brits feel the same though, and Marmite is famously marketed as a polarising food that you either love or hate. The proper stuff is only manufactured in the UK in the Burden on Trent Marmite factory. It's been there since 1902 and produces roughly 50 million jars in a year. And no, Australia, Vegemite is not as good. Number 9. Public schools are private schools. Settle down. You'll often hear it said that our country is run by public school boys. However, this doesn't mean what it might in other parts of the world. It doesn't imply that these politicians went to state-funded institutions and pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. It suggests that they were born into extreme privilege and attended some of the most prestigious fee-paying schools in the world. In the UK, we refer to schools for the general public as state schools and private schools for the wealthy as public schools or independent schools. Except not all private schools are called public schools. Some do actually call themselves private schools and most call themselves charities too. Registered charities. Confused yet? No more than you should be. Number 8. Insults are our love language. Terms of affection and endearment are different the world over. In the UK, you know that someone feels comfortable around you if they insult you to your face. Or they might just be rude. They're not jokes as such, they're just little things to say. Yeah, it's probably fine in the hands of taxi drivers, or Cockneys, or even Geordies. When you've lived here long enough, you'll learn to tell the difference. Sarcasm may be the lowest form of wit, but it's also a great tool for masking social awkwardness. It stops conversations becoming too serious and fends off the Brit's greatest fear, earnestness. We spend so much time being generally polite, no one wants to put that wall up around their own friends and family. Do you know what you are? You're a big bag of shit! It doesn't mean we love each other any less, but where's the fun in life without some friendly teasing? Deadpan delivery required, of course. Number 7. Town names and their pronunciation. British place names are famously difficult for tourists to get their head around. Even native born Brits will get tripped up at some point. The English language has a checkered history. You can blame most of the confusion on the Romans, Anglo Saxons, and the Vikings. Also, the French and the Celts. Being able to pronounce the name of Welsh village has even become something of a party piece. Just up the road from the temperature got to 21 Celsius. When you take pronunciation out of the equation, however, there are still a lot of place names that sound like somebody might be having you on. From Fatty Head to Scratchy Bottom, there are oddly named towns in every corner of the British Isles. Number 6. The variety of accents. When it gets loudly, it gets very loud indeed. 
it gets very specific. It's not quite nasal enough the way you're doing it, all right? You're not doing it the way he speaks. Every country has its own differences in dialect and accent, even if it's difficult for an outsider to hear the nuance. But for such a small place, the UK does seem to have a disproportionate amount of variety. For a long time, a British accent was generally thought of as standard received pronunciation. But with the world opening up, regional accents are gradually becoming more familiar to foreign ears. What I'm saying is, they're, like, they had to sell proper jobs, you know, for the Gantil. Then they weren't dead. You know, a lot of them from broken homes. Oh, sorry, that was just a noise. A Glasgow accent is very different from a Newcastle accent, which is different from a Birmingham accent. You're a good man. And a good soldier. People in the countryside don't sound the same as those in the town. Some people in Wales and Scotland even speak a whole different language. And nobody speaks like Dick Van Dyke, bless him. All right, I'll do it myself. Number five, hot and cold taps. There are a few questions that non-natives tend to have about British bathrooms. The no plugs thing is clearly a health and safety issue. The carpets are about keeping warm, but separate taps for hot and cold, they're a bit more difficult to justify. We do have our reasons, they're just not really relevant anymore. Historically, cold water came from the mains and was safe to drink. I'm quite alright, Barbara. I ran it under a cold tap. Hot water was a later addition to UK households. When it did arrive, it was usually heated in a tank in the loft. Therefore, it wasn't as fresh. Modern bathrooms do sometimes have mixer taps, they've just not really caught on yet. Number 4. The Tea Obsession No, Britain is not the only country to enjoy a nice cup of tea. Do you know, I can't remember the last time I had a good cup of tea. But we are quite singular in the way we take it. It's possibly only the Irish who also understand this one. For the real tea drinker, you must understand this is not just a casual beverage. It is usually an addiction, begun in late childhood. A cup of tea can be a consolation, an offer of friendship, or a gauge of how long a visitor is going to stay. When a British person says tea, they do not mean chamomile or green or iced, they mean English breakfast, usually with milk and often with sugar. And please, don't leave the tea bag in the cup. Tea Earl Grey hot. Number 3. Metric or Imperial the UK officially adopted the metric system in 1965. That's over 50 years ago. It's what they use in Europe. It's what we learn in school. It's a much simpler way of working things out, as you're working with units of 10, not 12. So why do we still weigh ourselves in pounds and stone? Measure our height in feet and inches? Travel in miles? Buy beer and milk in pints? The older generation will occasionally still tell you the temperature in Fahrenheit. Shouldn't we have acclimatised by now? No one under the age of 70 grew up under the imperial system. Good luck explaining this to anyone outside Britain, because it makes no sense at all. Number 2. Baked Beans for Breakfast British food has never had a great reputation with the rest of the world. We traditionally choose hearty, comforting food, and that's okay. We need it in our climate. However, if there's one British dish that visitors really can't fathom, it's the humble beans on toast. Baked beans are a staple for the average Brit. Usually eaten as part of a fried breakfast or as a quick snacky tea, sometimes they're just what you need. They are eaten elsewhere in the world, but you'd be more likely to find them at a barbecue than on a breakfast table. No one else has taken this simple convenience food to their hearts quite like us. Number 1. What is the country actually called? The United Kingdom, Great Britain, the British Isles. So which is it? Well, the British Isles is a geographical term. It describes a group of islands including Great Britain, the island of Ireland, the Isle of Man, the Scottish Isles and the Seely Isles. Great Britain is the biggest island in the group and is made up of England, Scotland and Wales. The United Kingdom is a political union full name, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It includes England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The red, white and blue flag is the Union flag, or Union Jack, and is composed of flags from England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. But not Wales. Got it? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.